Hello everyone and welcome back to another review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got another bottle, I've just opened, I've sat it here, I've let it breathe because it's brand new, it's cash strength, it's something I've been looking forward to for a while. It is the Glen Allocky 10 year old batch 5. So this is cash strength, natural colour, 55.9% ABV and 10 years old. The colour straight away just draws you in, it's wildly dark on the nose i've not even put my nose in it yet i've just poured it i've trapped it in there and just going to see what happens when i get into it the annoying thing is i did make a cool little video of uncorking it and pouring it in but i accidentally deleted it whilst um trying to set up to actually do the video so i'll try and think it's in here i'm ready to go i'm quite excited about this one i do like glenn allocate i do like belly walker does there so let's hope this one does pack a punch and can maybe get all the excitement on the palate and the nose going. So let's get the nose in here and we'll go through a little bit of where the distillery is, what it's all about. Oh wow. It's very soft. Like a delicate smell to it. It's... It's quite leathery got a leather note to it, I'd say slight, slight floral, a tang to it, like not lemon or lime, slightly sweeter, maybe like a, a candied orange or something along that way, orangey leather, soft, a wee bit floral, Slightly like um, papuri, you know that stuff that sits in um, a little bowl and it just fills the room with smell. It's quite like that. It smells great. The legs on it as well are just, again, if you can see, and the colour. Super dark. It smells magic. I'll get this on the palette. Let's see what it does, see if it can give me any more flavour to it. But leathery, orangey, purpurey, floral, maybe a wee bit malty. Slange everyone. It's a little bit nutty, sweet, slightly maybe oaky to it as well. There's something else there that I just can't get. With the ABV, this is definitely going to be one I want to add a little bit of water to, see how it opens up. But this here, so Glen Allocate, Speyside Distillery. I think it's at the foothills of Ben Rennes, I think, somewhere like that. So it's right in the, right in the heart of Speyside. It's owned by Billy Walker, so it's quite independently owned. I think he took over in 2017. He inherited about 50,000 casks of whiskey, so he's got some job to go around there. I think some of the whiskey was dating back from the 70s, maybe late 60s, early 70s. So he's got a really vast catalogue of, of casks sitting there. The batch four of this won, I think, like the award of the best whiskey of the year, like the the real best whiskey of the year last year. This year, the batch five here is a combination of what have I got? Oloroso sherry, Pedro Jimenez, Rioja wine casks, and virgin oak casks. So you've got this combination all married together using these amazing catalogue of casks. As I always say, whatever Billy Walker seems to touch turns to liquid gold it's just something there's a passion there he knows what he's doing he knows what the drinker wants what they want their whiskey to be like and he goes in changes things touches it and it just turns to amazing liquid this here is absolutely great for the first dram i am going to add a little splash of water and you see all the oils all congealing together just moving around there just 
settling into each other. So more independently owned distillery, Billy Walker's distillery, he did move from Glendronach down Rhea King Glen Glasser. You know what he's done there, how good that stuff became. And then he's moved on to on to this. So I think he lives near Glasgow and he travels up to Spainside all the time just to make sure everything's all in order. So he's got a really cool job. I'm quite envious of that. I wouldn't mind having a go around at 50,000 casks. Maybe not in one day, but I'm pretty sure I could do it maybe two. I'm only joking. I would do that. But I would love to see what's there and pick their brain and be like, what's your cask you go for? What are you looking for? How do you know these casks are going to work together when you, when you marry them together? I would love to know how that works. So a little bit of water in there now. It's became a bit sweeter on the nose. The leather notes disappeared. It's kind of more of a the orange, <clears throat> orangey floral note comes through. I would definitely say floral for sure. So let's try this with the water and see if it changes anything in the palate if I can get anything else from it. It stays soft. It's quite I'm going to say malty, honey maltiness to it, which I didn't expect because of the colour and what it is. I expected spice. I get no spice. It's very soft. The only kick you're getting is from the alcohol. These casts, for some reason, how they've married together, for me, I'm not getting spice, which is fine. My eyes tell me I should get spice and I shouldn't get honey, but my palates tell me completely different. And I think that's great. It's a really... Slightly complex, lot of flavour going on. Whiskey. Wow. So leather to start with the orange, the papuri, and the floral notes. The palate is then became started quite nutty. Into honeyed maltiness. really good. The little bit of water just brings it back, settles it down, gives you a little bit more opportunity to try and find some flavours in there. But it's great. Yes. I think the only thing I'm gutted about about this bottle is I've had it for a month and it's been unopened for a month. I kind of wish I had it open way before. I'm getting a kind of cherry note now. So it's just sitting there. I'm getting that kind of cherry note from a really good bourbon cask that's been used. I know they've got virgin oak, but there's that kind of cherry note. I feel that virgin oak is taking a good, it's representing this whiskey very well. And I feel maybe that all are also the PX and the Rioja has just climbed on top of that just to even it out. Yeah, just that little cherry note just kicked in there. Very enjoyable. If this is still available, I would recommend going for something like this. If you want something slightly different, yes, there's sherry notes in there, but a little bit of wine influence from a bit of virgin oak and not just a full hitting PX cask, which I do really, really love. I love a Pedro Jimenez cask, just fully matured or a finish. That's my kind of go-to. But this is something a little bit different and hopefully something you would enjoy. I'm going to sit back, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this, it's my day off, today is Thursday for me, so this will be going live tomorrow, which is now, well, as I always say, when you get to watch it, it's today, so I may have a little bit more out of this today and just get to know it a little bit more, it's very enjoyable, first introduction to it, I've enjoyed this a lot, so hopefully you can get your hands on one, pick one up, get it at a good price, don't pay over the odds, 
and get it open and let me know what you think. I do have a winner from last week's um, little question of, you know, what's your favourite whiskey and why? Can't remember the exact question, but when I was going through the comments, um, the comment that I kept it with was Frank Rockford. Hopefully I'm saying that's, that right, Rockford. I think he's down in Campbelltown. Um, and the thing that connected with me there was the fact that he said he'd had a whiskey that he kept it with and he didn't after because it was in batches. And he put in there, was it a bad batch? And I totally understand that I've had whiskies that I've loved and they come out in batches and you hit one batch which hits you up here and you can hit another batch that hits you down there. So I connected with that. So Frank, uh, get in touch with me. I will send you a sample of the Mac Tala that I had last week. And you need to let me know where you're staying. I'll get that down and maybe chuck something else in for you too. So this week, to win a sample of this, the question I want to know is, what is your favourite Glenallachie and why? Even if it is this one, tell me, or if, sorry, if it's not this one, let me know what your favourite Glenallachie is and why. And something, if I can connect with there as well, I'll send a sample of this to you and I'll put that one out in next week's video. I just want to say thanks for everyone who's been subscribing, who's been leaving comments, all these things, reaching out and just all the nice words and everything. It's been absolutely amazing. I do this for that, just to, for enjoyment. You know, I love whiskey, I love talking about whiskey. So it's been great to get a bit of communication back and forth. I absolutely love that. I try and reply to comments when I can. Um, if not, I'll leave a wee love heart on there just to know that I've seen it. Just so you know that I don't just run by them. But... I've been Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey and join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Slanch.